You know, some people think that we live in the worst timeline, and there's a fair amount of evidence for this, uh, but days like today really convince me that we live in the best timeline, or something pretty darn close. Days like August 19th, 2025 are going to go down in fairly obscure history as days that we've made progress as mankind, because not one, not two, but three major events happened. The first was that Kirby Air Riders was announced for the Nintendo Switch 2, and that's completely unrelated to the scope of this video, um, but it looks pretty great, so that's hype, I can't play it because I can't afford a Switch 2. Uh, the second thing that happened was that after seven years of waiting, Notion finally decided to add an offline mode. And before we get to that, let's quickly cover the third thing that happened, which is that Obsidian decided to introduce bases to all of its users. So we'll start there. Now, Obsidian has kind of been seen in the note-taking sphere as the tech bro's alternative to Notion. Uh, it's got a larger emphasis on coding, on do-it-yourself, customizable themes, uh, and some people like to say that it requires computer science knowledge to make run, which is simply untrue. Uh, but one of the things that Notion has always lacked is this data mindset. You see, products like Notion, um, or other tools that are fairly popular like that, like to use databases and allow you to add lots of different entries into these databases, kind of to make some glorified spreadsheets, because, you know, white people love those. Now, Obsidian, despite being better than Notion in every other possible way, uh, being offline, highly customizable, not uh, filled with AI, has never come around to making something even close to this kind of database. Uh, some people have done them with their own custom plugins, like DataView, but there's really been no movement by Obsidian to try to capture this ground. Until a few months ago, when Obsidian decided to announce that for its beta testers, its Catalyst group, it was going to start testing some new database features, as they called them just bases. Now, they said that the testing window on this would be longer than usual, and that nobody should get their hopes up, but lo and behold, I checked the Obsidian Reddit last night, and what do they say? Bases are now available to all users. This is awesome. It's right before the school year, it's right when some people will be going to Notion for the first time, or going back to Notion. Now we have an alternative in Obsidian. So right now on your Obsidian, you can go in and start a new base. I'll make a more in-depth video in a little bit talking about how these actually work and running through a tutorial with them. I also want to just get some time to work with them myself before I talk about them. But this is a huge new feature for Obsidian. It's basically moving in the direction of capturing some of the features of Notion without being the same strange company that Notion is. Now, talking about Notion, they've actually made some developments themselves. You see, for the longest time, one of the largest issues that people had with Notion was the fact that you couldn't use it offline. It was very helpful, people put a lot of information there, but all of the data was stored in these big vaults in the cloud, nobody could really access them, and if you wanted to use Notion on the train, on the airplane, or you just wanted to use Notion when the power went out, too bad, it wasn't going to work for you. Now, people have complained about this for years upon years, to the point that the Notion Reddit was basically known for just being negative on the fact that they still don't have any offline mode. Notion teased an offline mode at the very end of their Make with Notion conference last October, and they just added a, a little one-minute snippet where they said, hey, we know we want this, we're working on it, and that was that. They did not talk about it much after that point. Then all of a sudden, a few days ago, their help page was updated with a how-to-use-offline mode tutorial, and now we're here. Offline mode has been added. Kind of. You see, offline mode doesn't work the same way it would on most other applications. In something like Obsidian, you simply turn off the internet and all of your files are still there because they're still stored on your computer. Notion doesn't want to play by those rules. Offline mode has to be toggled by page. Now, the ramifications of this are a little complicated. I haven't quite figured them out, but my understanding is you can't make your vault completely offline. You can't store the entirety of the vault on your computer, or at least you can't do that with one click. You have to go into each page or each database and make them offline. Now, again, I could be slightly mistaken on this, but I do know that there's no way, as of right now, to make your entire Notion vault offline. It's simply not possible. So where does this leave Notion, and frankly, where does this leave Obsidian? Notion is in a weird place. They've somewhat satisfied consumer demands by adding a feature that they've been clamoring for for seven years. But at the same time, Notion's not super popular anymore. The Instead of developing features that people actually wanted, like a handwritten part for uh, iPad users, they started forcing calendar and mail and AI down everyone's throats, which, to be fair, they aren't all bad features, they're just not what anyone asked for. Now we finally get offline, but it's a half-baked offline idea. On the other hand, we have Obsidian, who 
has finally added a feature that frankly not that many people were asking for. Obsidian worked great without this, but now it's even better. So if I had to give my analysis on these events, I would say that this is Notion trying to recapture a user base that's mostly moved away, and Obsidian trying to capture the movements of that user base that's leaving Notion. Sure, both of these features are somewhat incomplete, but the difference is that Obsidian is adding something in addition to its already functioning product, whereas Notion is trying to add something that should have been in its product from day one, or at least from before we started adding uh, Notion Mail, whatever that is. So in the long run, where does this leave us? I would still push for Obsidian as the better tool, and I think the majority of people who actually follow this sort of thing would. The reason for that is that Notion is becoming more and more focused on working for companies instead of for people. The fact that offline mode uh, is so limited in its scope kind of furthers this idea. Notion is only interested in selling its subscription models, whereas Obsidian doesn't really have a subscription model unless you want to pay for Obsidian Sync. On the other hand, Obsidian is trying to innovate new features and actually provide some new use cases for its own tool. And given the fact that Obsidian's plugins and themes keep getting updated, there's just so much more going on on that half of the internet. I think both tools are great, but if I had to choose one, I would go with Obsidian, and I think you should as well. But that's just my take on it. If you have thoughts, let me know down below. I'll be doing a detailed look at both of these features and more features in other apps very soon here, so be sure to stick around if you're interested in seeing that. Otherwise, have a great one, and I'll see you next time.